Okay, guys, welcome back. I know it's your favorite day of the week, Tuesdays, where I answer your questions that you write. It's a serious one this week, guys, so I want you guys to comment what you think below. Um, let's start. My ex told me she's pregnant. I broke up with her, so I don't know if she is lying and using this as a way for me to take her back. She has mental health issues, so I would not put it past her to lie about this. She told me she was on the pill, and I was pretty careful regardless. I don't know what to do or where to start. I'm 22 years old, and I live at home. I haven't told anyone yet, as I just found this out. I'm hoping you can give me some direction on where to even start. All right, let's break it down. So this guy's 22 years old. He lives at home with his parents. He broke up with her, and he said that he was careful. She has mental health issues, so he wouldn't put it past her to lie about this. She also said she was on the pill to him. Guys, before I get into this video, one thing that I have to stress to every single man, do not trust women when they say they are on the pill. It doesn't matter if they say that. It doesn't matter if they show you that they're on the pill. It doesn't matter if they, they show you their birth control, other forms of contraception. It doesn't matter. Unless it's your wife, you should not be risking having children. So this guy says he was pretty careful. I don't know exactly what that means, what he means by he was pretty careful. Because if he thinks, if you think that there's a chance that she's pregnant, then I don't think that you were actually careful. I would also love to know why you broke up with her. Because guys don't really leave girls. There's, It's rare that a man will break up with a woman. So I'm really curious as to why you left her. But I'm assuming, since you mentioned that she had mental health issues, I'm assuming it has something to do with that. Okay, so first things first. You need to communicate with her via text message only so that you have proof and save every single text message that you have with her. Any any type of communication that you have with her, if it's emails, anything, save it. Don't meet up with her in person. Um, what you need to do first is you need to go see a lawyer. What you're going to do is you're obviously going to get a paternity test. That is number one. There's no question about that. That's the number one thing that you need to do. And you have to determine how many months she has. she's pregnant because I don't know the exact amount of months that you need to be pregnant for, but she can do a paternity test while being pregnant. She doesn't have to have the baby in order to, to do the paternity test. So go online and research that first things first. You just Google search it and you'll be able to find it. But I do know for a fact, because I've heard it and I've heard other men speaking about their experiences, that they have had the woman do paternity tests while she was pregnant. So you can definitely do one while she's pregnant. If that's your first thing that you have to do. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to see a lawyer. Okay. Um, Google search. I don't know where you live. I don't know if you're in Canada. I don't know if you're the, in the US, but it should fairly be around the same amount of money everywhere. Um, a consultation for a lawyer is usually anywhere from $200 to, let's say, $500 for an hour, an hour and a half. This is what it's like in Canada. Um, depending on the seniority of the lawyer, um, it's going to vary. So let's say you'll have a more junior lawyer, maybe they'll be $250 an hour. A more senior lawyer, $550 an hour. So a consultation will generally be about one hour to an hour and a half. Make sure you're prepared with all of your questions before you go to that consultation and also include what to do if she doesn't want to do a paternity test. Prepare yourself and make the most use out of this consultation so that when you do contact her for that paternity test, you're well equipped and you're knowledgeable in how to react to this and how to how to handle the situation and be prepared for it. So those two things off the bat are non-negotiable. Save the text messages, any messages that she's been messaging you, do not delete them. Don't have any communication with her via phone or in person, only text messages, but for the moment being, limit it. Don't, don't talk to her until you figure out what steps you're gonna take because you have to take this matter seriously and into your own hands as soon as possible. If it costs you a little bit of money right now, it's way better than it costing you so much more money in the future. Get all of your ducks in a row right now rather than dealing with the mess, the, the after effect and the mess and not having any control of the situation. Like you said, she might be lying, but you have to prepare yourself in the case that she's not. And in the case that she's not lying, is the baby even yours? You have to do a paternity test. It's a non-negotiable. And and she might refuse to do one. She might try to 
delay it. She might try to avoid it. So you have to go and speak to a lawyer as soon as possible. Do a consultation. Don't retain a lawyer yet. If I were you, I would tell my parents because honestly speaking, your parents are going to be more experienced. Um, and they have more experience in life. They care about you and they're going to want you to succeed and they're going to want the best for you. So if I were you, I wouldn't keep this a secret. I would tell my parents, um, like you said, you live at home, so you're probably close with your parents. But personally, I, I'm extremely close with my family. So if, if I were in the situation, I would be definitely speaking to my family about it. Everyone's situation is different, of course. Um, my family would obviously guide me in a in the right direction, and I know that I could count on them to to really help me out um, with their support in that sense. And so I don't know your situation with your family, but if you can't count on your family in that sense, then you have to take matters into your own hands. Book that consultation. Prepare yourself thoroughly before going to speak to that lawyer and make the most out of that time. The next thing that you're going to do after speaking to your lawyer is likely that you're going to reach out to her and ask her for the paternity test. Um, I would, if I were you in this situation, you guys broke up, right? So you cannot let her feel like she has this upper hand in the situation and use this as a way to control you. Um, you have to keep it very civil and you have to keep it very almost professional especially until you know whether or not this baby is yours. So the fact that you said that she has mental health issues and might be using this as a way to maybe get back together with you, you don't want to give her that false hope and you don't want to give her that power to think that she can use this as a way to lure you back in. So you have to keep this professional. If you do have to retain the lawyer, you got to do what you got to do because at the end of the day, this will cost you more money in the future than now. And it is worth the money. It is worth your, it's worth your sanity to have that protection and to really cover yourself, to really protect yourself. Um, and also if this is your child, it ends up being your child. And you, like you said, she has mental health issues. This child might be better in your care full time. So you just have to do what's best for you and possibly if this is your child what's best for your child so protect yourself go see a lawyer as soon as possible and make sure that you get a paternity test those are the two things that are just a must but the most important thing right now is for you to be proactive and try to take control of the situation as soon as possible because too many guys uh don't do that and they let women walk all over them and you need to take charge of this situation i know you said you're only 22 years old but you made your bed and now you have to face the consequences from this and i hope that other men can learn from your situation and i hope that other men are really careful in terms of whom they're dating so i you know i wish you the best of luck um right now do those two things take it from there um uh, let me know how things go right back in and we can discuss further advice. But that's the advice that I would give you for the time being. Best of luck to you. And guys, take this as a lesson learned. This happens to way too many men. So please don't be one of these men that gets trapped by another woman.